Uh, let's be clear, this bill has nothing to do with justice. It has nothing to do with cleaning the environment, and it has nothing to do with protecting the prosperity of the American people. This bill undercuts the infrastructure bill. We will not get as much out of the infrastructure bill as a result of the passage of this bill. This bill grows lawsuits. This bill grows government. And when government grows, poverty follows. That's what will happen if we continue to advance bills like this. So um, history was alluded to um, in some of the opening remarks. So let's go back. In the year 1900, the life expectancy in the United States of America was about the mid-50s, right around 55 years of age. As you got to the end of the 20th century, life expectancy was in the mid-70s. Infant mortality in the year 1900 was one in 10 children in their first two years. Infant mortality at the end of the 20th century was four in 1,000. You can do the math on the improvement there. What was much of that improvement based on? An abundance of energy reducing the cost of having to heat your home to transport you and your family. We reduced all of those things for the American people and they were able to spend more money on schools, on health care, and things like that. And much of that came from having an abundance of energy. Let's fast forward to uh, in my state of Wisconsin, we reduced from 1990 to like 2010, we reduced nitrous oxide emissions and sulfur dioxide emissions from power plants by over 80%. Great improvement, great improvement that happened to protect the health of every American. So let's go to the last couple years. Two years ago, me and my neighbors in northern Wisconsin, some of them poor, I've been in those communities, I talked to those people, including people that are in tribal governments, and they're paying 80 cents a gallon for propane. That's their home uh, heating uh, fuel of choice because they don't have natural gas lines running to them. They're now paying $2 a gallon. They're now paying $2,000 a gallon, and it's because of the green fantasy. And as a result of the green fantasy, MISO came out, which is the regional operator of the, power, uh, the electrical grid in the upper Midwest, they put out for the first time a threat of blackouts in the state of Wisconsin. First time threat of blackouts. Two utilities in the state of Wisconsin had to announce that we are not going to de decommission three coal-fired plants in the state of Wisconsin out of fear that there are going to be blackouts. And why is that? Because we are trading base load power for intermittent sources of energy. Wind and solar, when you come to the upper Midwest in the state that I live in, it's on at most 20 to 25% of the time. And in fact, just a couple years ago in a severe cold snap in Northern Minnesota, north of the Twin Cities, the wind turbines shut down because they don't operate when it's below 25 degrees below zero. As a former dam man on the Willow Flowage in northern Wisconsin who used to keep detailed weather data, I can tell you it occasionally gets below 25 below. I've seen it 44 degrees below zero in the region that I live in. And a wind turbine won't work? The green fantasy is exactly that. And we continue to see diesel fuel, over $5 a gallon. The Biden administration touts, oh gosh, we got gasoline coming down. Diesel stubbornly stays so high. And why does it cost so much? I even saw a surcharge, a surcharge on eggs at a local restaurant in the last week. A surcharge on eggs. Thank you. Thank you so much to the Biden administration. $10,000 more for a used car, $100,000 more for a home, and you wonder why people can't, um, can't afford to get into a home. This is all about job security, economic security, and national security. This is the most serious stuff that we deal with here in the Congress of the United States. And we are going in the wrong direction. And I just say to the American people, this is the elitist. This is the green elitist that are trying to shut down production in the world. Go to the Netherlands currently and see what farmers are fighting against. Go to Sri Lanka and see what was foisted on those people. And we are for the common people 
a command and control economy versus an economy that offers liberty. I will choose liberty every time rather than command and control like this bill is here. I yield back.